everyone. Welcome to the Awesome Day of Filemaker Training. I'm Richard Carlton, creator of FMTrain.tv, where every day it's always exciting. Today's conversation is going to be on the Claris FileMaker Web Direct client, which is kind of interesting. A lot of people use it, and it, the use of it is very uh, specialized and tricky. And so, um, I mean, it's easy to get sucked into it, but then it's easy to kind of overpromise what it'll do. So that's one of those things you got to be careful with. So we're going to talk about that today at great length. So let's first cover the upcoming part of the broadcast today. I am actually working diligently with Margaret to get the schedule set and shuffled correctly. Today's going to be an introduction on FileMaker WebDirect. Tomorrow we're going to be covering record and layout level access. It's a topic we've covered about once a year, and it's a good one to cover. Um, so we'll be doing that tomorrow. And then on Wednesday, we're gonna be doing the Monkey Bread plugin, uh, new, some new examples with Christian Schmidt. I am not gonna be around that day. I'll be in the air flying. Uh, I gotta get down to Southern California for a day and then I'll be back. Um, and then a preview of Monkey Bread 14.1. So why all the Monkey Bread stuff? Once again, um, because it does so many essential things that the FileMaker platform doesn't do. Okay, so the, the plugin is really great at kind of patching the holes in the FileMaker platform where, you know, there's not like really good, you know, management of, of photos and editing and all sorts of, it's like 7,000 functions it does. So if you've watched this at all, you know that there's a tremendous amount. I use it all the time uh, to help uh, minimize record locking issues, things like that as well. So then on Friday, interesting conversation. So um, we got notices that PayPal was deprecating some code. Once again, that's the thing with APIs. You build these APIs. In fact, that's it's happened a couple times now. Um, the APIs have uh, kind of time out and get old. And if you're hooked into them and you're still using them, then maybe your solution quits working. It's something I've always personally hated. It makes me nervous. Um, but it's one of those sort of things. It's called technical debt. You have to, If you have a solution, you're always going to be doing little bits of reinvestment in it. Like if you have a car and you want to last, you have to do little bits like oil changes to it and change the tires and do things like that. And so this is like a tire change. It's not a crisis, but it's a little bit of time and work with PayPal. So our we, we went back into our sample file, looked at it. The sample file we've had updated for about six, eight, nine months is the correct code that's available from PayPal. It's the latest code, but Somewhere in, at RCC system, we still have the old API being used. And so PayPal actually called me on the phone and said, hey, really like you're a good customer, blah, blah, blah. Can you change your API so you can still make money with PayPal when we when they shut it off? So what they do is they terminate or deprecate the old API. So that's uh, something that's coming up with PayPal. We're going to cover it briefly with John Hogle on Friday, and there'll be an open Q&A on that. If you want to support the channel, as a reminder, come over to the training bundles, pick one of the training bundles we greatly appreciate it all right so real quick so so what are we doing today with with this material let me see if i can pop this up over here so i was making some notes on the web direct curriculum not that i really want to spend a lot of time on it web direct continues to be something remember a moment ago that we talked about how how the apis would kind of get deprecated they'd be for some reason that the company that built them a lot of times it's a security issue or they change their policies or something. So like in the case of PayPal, you could always charge money to PayPal and do things like that, but they keep increasing the security uh, with, the, with the API because the API might use a certain encryption or something like that. And so PayPal keeps increasing, improving the levels of encryption security. So that's this kind of reinvestment thing, right? So that's kind of the same thing that goes in with WebDirect. WebDirect has a very transient, it's based upon, you know, web browsers. So if we're talking about WebDirect, um, the idea is that it's, it's web browser-based technology. As a result of that, it's subject to little funky moments happening with it because the operating system gets updated, right? The JavaScript changes a little bit. And ideally, in an ideal world, it doesn't retroactively break stuff, but it breaks stuff all the time. Uh, we have this transient notification system. Remember, Kyle Williams came on, had a little button, and it would a uh, web viewer would pop up on screen, show you something that would fly off the screen. Transient notification. They're still working, but kind of barely with the version two of, of Kyle's demo file. So Kyle updated to version three. He fixed the JavaScript or whatever with that. I'm trying to get Kyle come on the show to talk about what he did and what it takes to retrofit it. But once again, it's a little bit of technical investment you need to make to ensure that your technology keeps moving forward. A lot of times, a lot of times it just breaks. 
In the case of the JavaScript stuff, the transient notifications, the colors are off or there's no color at all on it. The message still comes on the screen, then it flies off or the icon isn't there anymore on the little, um, little popover. So um, it's one of those things that it's breaking subtly. Well, not super subtle, but it's still working, but you can, something's not happy. Gives us a chance to update and fix it. So that's, that's this topic once again. So real quick, if you go into Claris, the technical specifications, you just search for Claris FileMaker technical specifications. Uh, if you go to FileMaker server, you scroll down here, you can see what versions are. So here's the deal with the clients. And I kind of have a uh, kind of a conversation about this. And once again, today is for beginners. So it's not so much for Wallace and a bunch of people who are super and probably Ruben or super senior ninja type people with the web direct. This is for beginners. So let's just keep this in mind today. If you're it's in the title of the live stream, it's, it's web direct for beginners. Um, is that the web direct is a basically a third client. So a client is an application that can access your database, your solution you've created that lives on a FileMaker server somewhere, right? And so it's a third client. We're going to actually fire it up and play with it. I'm going to give all you folks the login for it. You can play with it today a little bit. But the idea is that there are two primary clients that were first created back in the day. There was FileMaker Pro, and that was Mac and Windows. Then from that was, was FileMaker Go for iOS. Once again, I'll state this officially. There are no plans uh, for an Android version of FileMaker Go. However, Claris did create this WebDirect technology, which was kind of a follow-on to instant web publishing, right? Which even if that's a great title, WebDirect is another good name. Those are both good names for products. Uh, instant web publishing was kind of a really janky kind of tech. It didn't work very well. The idea is that if you're in FileMaker on Pro, or Go, well, Pro, because that's where you design it, develop it. You want it to look pretty similar to that on Go, and you would really like it to look similar to that on the web browser, and WebDirect does that. It does have certain limitations. We're going to talk about that. So understand that there are these different clients. Once again, this is just my notes over here. Yeah, for Android uh, use, you're going to want to dot, 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 use WebDirect, right? Use WebDirect, because there will not be any uh, Go for that. Right. So let's talk about this real briefly. So th this is the idea of what the client is, right? Step one. Step two, it's not something you install on your computer, right? Pro, you install it on your computer. Go, you install it on your iOS device. WebDirect is something that magically works with a URL that you get. And, it, and so basically, WebDirect is created out of thin air by the FileMaker server. And so what you want to do is make sure that you're going to have a compatible version of FileMaker server that's already installed. So you have to have this. Some of you like to use peer-to-peer -peer sharing. I don't want to buy a FileMaker server. If you don't have FileMaker server, you can't have WebDirect, period. It's not, it's not, it's not a negotiation, just is not available. Okay. If you scroll down here, we'll eventually get to a spot probably in here, somewhere buried in this document. It talks about the minimum specifications for your FileMaker server. Eventually it'll talk about the minimum specifications for support web browsers right which is once again um web filemaker web direct desktop right and so once again web direct is a browser the web direct offering and this is subtle and i ran into this in our paid training course but web direct what it supports on a desktop browser so mac and windows 11 pro right what it's or some variation of Windows, uh, professional Windows, not mobile, um, that the feature set will be a little different. And basically, if this if this is 100 features over here, I'm just making this up, then, Web, then the WebDirect Mobile might have 95 features. So there's a little slight subset of things that don't fully work. So if you want to use WebDirect over here, you're going to use Safari uh, 17, um, as far as 16, you want Chrome version 114 is the uh, is the ideal one. Um, they added 114 support. 108 was to be the minimum. I don't know how old 108 is off the top of my head, Margaret. If someone says something about uh, that, let me know about the uh, how old 108 is. It'd be interesting. Microsoft Edge 1 uh, 114 is added with the latest version. Microsoft 108 is weird that their numbers are the same. Is that an error? Is, is Microsoft numbering their stuff the same as Chrome? Can one of you folks, conf I mean. Or the, they didn't realize the two were related in any They're not, way. well, there might, there's some under the hood libraries that are probably being used by Microsoft Edge, um, open source libraries, but for them, the number is the same. I mean, this is Apple, Apple does our own things. Like, hey, screw you. 
Google does its own thing, and then why would Microsoft? That's weird. Okay, I didn't get every. I've oh, never... Microsoft Edge is built on the same technology as Google Chrome is. So. Yeah, but they chose to keep the numbers the same, which is so weird. All right, fine. That's fine. I'll just point that out because I, to when I see stuff like that, and I see Google and Microsoft agreeing on something. I think it's a typo. Just kind of weird. All right, so moving along. So it talks about the number of connections and things like that, the amount of hardware you need. So let's talk about the the big picture here. So th th so this is the technical requirements. If you do a search once again for FileMaker uh, 2023 technical specifications, you can come down here and find this. Now the next, that's one link. If I close, gonna go backwards, gonna close that one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Claris and what you're gonna do, web direct. Uh, you could say best practices, but you could say guide, right? And what you end up is you end up in a, Claire says an introduction or web direct 19 guide, but you end up with this guide. It's based in their new help system that they have right here. So this is it right here. I'm in FileMaker. I think this is probably the current release of this, but it used to be a PDF, but then they kind of, uh, dumbed it down a little bit and they, well dumbed it down they have this different architectures what apple used to do the human interface guidelines of pdf they use kind of a, a wiki kind of tool that generates all this stuff so the short version of this is that it's browser based here it is you can get in here in the architecture and talk about how mechanically it works the short version of all this is that a web server is going to be communicating with you and FileMaker WebDirect. The important part about this is there's these general design principles, is that FileMaker server is doing all the thinking for you for the most part. Very little processing is being done at the client level. So let's talk about that with versus FileMaker Pro. When you're dealing with FileMaker Pro, by itself FileMaker Pro can run a database all by itself. It doesn't need anything else. FileMaker Go can run and manage a database all by itself. It doesn't need any help. Now, if you use FileMaker Server with Pro or Go, you can collaborate, right? But Pro and Go can do calculations. They can, sh they can notice script triggers that are being fired. They can do all this stuff locally. So when you're using FileMaker Server with FileMaker Pro and Go, Pro does some of the calc, the server does some of the calculations. That's a big, huge conversation, multiple days of, of discussion about performance tuning. The short version is that both the local client and the server are contributing effort to make your experience as positive as possible. That's what a fat client is. A fat client is a dedicated client that you install on your computer, okay? A thin client like a super thin client like vapor thin client is like a browser interface. So how much does the browser know about FileMaker data and processing? It, it knows almost nothing. And so as a result of that, the local browser isn't going to do too much for you. So if you do any heavy lifting at all, you have to do it. Uh, <laughs> you have to do it in such a way that uh, that the server, keep in mind, the server is going to do all the thinking for you all the thinking the server does. So if you start typing into a field or a trigger fires or anything that happens, the server is thinking about it, doing it, and then giving you the data so the browser can render it, right? So that is is fundamentally the huge issue. WebDirect is a client that it runs on the server. Yeah, as opposed to a fat client that Ruben was saying, it's a client that runs on the server. Yeah, I just be careful with that thought process because it's not like a, um, it's not really a virtual, like some people will buy like the terminal services from Citrix or that kind of thing where you're actually logged into your own experience. It's not that. It's not that. It's uh, it, it uses the shared resources of the FileMaker server. You don't have your own independent little slice. It doesn't work that way. So just be careful with the framing of that, Ruben, because it's uh, it can give people the wrong idea. So if you go to the capabilities of FileMaker, um, and what we're gonna we're gonna dive into this momentarily here, but WebDirect largely does everything. <laughs> everything that FileMaker Pro and Go do generally, and I say that generally, it generally does a good job of rendering things. It doesn't have really device level um, awareness, um, not good device level awareness. So once again, if you have a FileMaker Go, it's tuned for iOS. If it's running on an iPhone or iPad, it knows about the camera. It knows about GPS coordinates. It knows how to do, it's on a touch screen, so it has signature capture. WebDirect doesn't have those things. So people want to say, well, I want a client that runs on Android as good as it runs on FileMaker Go. Generally, it doesn't do that. If you want the super smooth integration that you would get from an Apple product, you're good. I've actually had customers sell off their Android devices and get iPhones and iPads because they want the super smooth integration. All right, so Margaret, what I'm going to do is I need to find, so here's a sample file that we have right here. There's a copy of Starting Point Light. 
Uh, let me go to stream.atrcc.com. I'm going to log into a FileMaker server. I'm going to log into the admin console, and you will have an admin console. See if this one gets in here. It does. So this is FileMaker server 20.3.1. So it doesn't have the security update from last week on it. Once again, that's something that you should do when it's opportune. It's not a crisis level security update. It's a kind of an edge case security update. So um, real quick, if you come into here, you'll notice you go to the databases, we'll see this. There's some databases that are running right here. We can see the clients that are connected, right? We're gonna go through that. More importantly, over here, if you go to administration, you can come down here, or is it uh, configuration, general settings, right? So here we have general settings, database server is running, start time, stop time, all that kind of stuff. Uh, where the database is set to automatically open. There was questions about this. Once again, always turn this off. Always turn that off. That way, when your FileMaker server restarts, either by accident or on purpose, you have a chance to look at it to make sure it's not using corrupted files. It's really, really good. If you come down here to Configuration, FileMaker Clients, you have some information on Pro and Go. You start to see information on WebDirect right here. WebDirect will sh log out automatically after 15 minutes if there's no activity on it. Okay, just keep that in mind. And so let's see, so where is the rest of this at? Those are the folders where you set up the various folder paths, various schedules, notifications, local notifications, general settings. Where is the, is it not connect? Oh, here it is, web con connectors, web publishing. So WebDirect is enabled. However, for WebDirect to be enabled, uh, the web publishing engine has to be enabled as well. So there's a, a primary machine over here, web publishing engine that's running. So FileMaker, so the way this works is that there are processes in your FileMaker server. There are programs that are running in FileMaker server. If I log on to Windows or log on to Mac or Linux, you bring up a process list. FileMaker server consists of like five, six, seven, eight processes that run together. One of those is the core server process called FM server, which is the core of the engine that's running. Another one you'll see is WPE, which is a web publishing engine. The web publishing engine basically digs into uh, the FM server, the core, in, the core data system, pulls out data, and then publishes it to you through WebDirect, right? So that's one of the mechanisms that's there. So this has to be on, that's on. So this machine is kind of set up and ready to go. If I open this file over here, if it opens, hello, go ahead and open one second. Oh, I'm just trying to try to open twice. There we go. Oh, it's now warning me that there's a security update. We'll skip that for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go into sec manage security. Before I post it to the server, I want to remove the full access, no password. So I'm going to put in one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm going to set this. I'm going to say, okay, admin. One, two, three, four. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show the top area. I'm going to say share it, upload to a host. And it says we're going to have to close the file to upload. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to go to the, if I add the server, I'm going to add it right here. It's stream dot at rcc .com. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell FileMaker to upload the file for us. I'm going to say it, the server administrator console is Richard Carlton, I think. And then I think it's. I think it's admin. Is it admin, actually? Pretty oh, it, sure is it's admin. Admin. it is admin. The machine is, but that is okay. So let me save that. Sign in. There it goes. So it's going to upload it and it's going to make it live for us. So the question is, is. I didn't set any of the extended privileges. I'll remember extended privileges manage the sharing. So if we want to access with Pro or Go or WebDirect, the correct uh, extended privilege must be enabled. So we're going to see what that is. First, we're going to try to log in with Pro. Now, we're going to invite all of you to log on as well. It'll be very exciting. I'm going to say done. And so it's trying to log into the file right here. I'm going to say admin. One, two, three, four. And so we're in the file. So uh, there is some data, sample data in here. There are some records in here. They can pop up. These containers for the moment are internal. It doesn't particularly matter. The whole file is like 75 megs. It's pretty small. So this is a copy of starting point light 23. The starting point light 24 is in progress. We are working on that. And I've been removing a lot of little stupid things in it that uh, confuse 
new people. So we're making it more simple. The interface will look the same, but it'll be simplified under the hood. So what I want to do is see if I can get into the, the web browser. So if I go to browser right here, so this is, by the way, if I come over here to data uh, dashboard or databases, I can see that the file is right here and Richard Carlton's logged in. So if you folks want to get into this, you go to stream, uh, that's your host name, stream.atrcc.com. Pick the starting point light 23 and it's admin 1234. Is to get into here and then it'll show that you're logged in here. So, what I'm going to do is on the browser side, just to play with the web direct so you can see the differences here in this, I'm going to go to stream.adrcc.com. I think it's FMI. And then I'm doing this web D like that. Is that it? That is it. All right. So, there's your link. All right, so these are the files that are on the server that somehow have the correct extended privilege set enabled. And maybe it's enabled for this one over here. Ah, so it's actually giving me the credential. So I'm going to try this admin. One, two, three, four. Sign in and update password. So it logged in. So the extended privilege set is on. So here it is, right? And it's loading right here. So if I go to contacts over here, but if that's the that's the web, oh, people are logging in. There we go, folks. Welcome, 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 right? And so if you you can also log in with Pro if you want. So here's Pro, and here is, and they look really similar, really, really similar. Um, one of those little gotchas, especially in Safari, I don't know it's a problem in Chrome so much, but when I'm in Safari, this button up here will screw you up. Okay, if I hit the back button, like I say, I'm doing stuff over here. We got Bugs Bunny, we got David Angel. You know, we add a new record, something. Then I say, oh, go back. And I don't hit this one, but I hit this one. It does something and it logs me out. And if I try to get back in here, I'm host. I have to re-log in. So you lose your spot entirely. So it's one of those things, uh, little got little gotcha issues around the edge. And you can't really tell this thing to hide this. You can't really tell it to hide it. Now, this is a record control. You can hide that. That old bar can be removed. But this top part up here is part of the browser. It's not really under the control of your browser, right? So that's up there. In Chrome, I think it puts it on the right side or something like that. So it's more hidden, if that makes sense. I haven't looked at it on Edge lately. WebDirect, right? We're back to this issue. Of what does it do and what doesn't it do? So here's the short version of this. WebDirect, what I would not try to create with WebDirect is a, a, a insanely intricate user interface. This is about as, as complicated as you want to get. The issues with WebDirect is, is, for example, we do things. Can I get rid of Stu for fun? Yeah. I'm going to click in here. I'm going to say add a company. It's actually working pretty good. That little white bar on the right is not ideal. That's the, probably the scroll bar should be hidden or something. But if I click over here and I start typing, one of the things you can do in Go and Pro is on keystroke or on layout key trigger. So if I type like R, you can actually set a trigger and it runs a script. These triggers, generally the on keystroke triggers are not supported in WebDirect. Some triggers are supported, but you should use them thoughtfully because remember, the local client would be doing the trigger for you. Pro or Go would be doing the trigger. And if you try to run the trigger back to the server, the server starts to struggle. Makes sense. And so what you want to do is be thoughtful. So if you're doing WebDirect, so the idea with WebDirect is that it works pretty well, right? But let's just talk about off the cuff what it absolutely will not do. We can go into the, the website for this a little bit. Understanding the capabilities of WebDirect, okay? So... WebDirect does not allow users to select objects that are located behind other objects. So in FileMaker, we have layering. WebDirect supports layering. In FileMaker, though, you can click on um, a spot that's like obstructed over, and FileMaker will allow your mouse click to go down through the layers to find out what you're actually trying to click and to activate it, per se, or something, put it in focus, whatever that is. And in, in WebDirect, if it's covered over, it's not available. So it's like literally like in Photoshop, when you tell layers to render together and smash together, right? Um, then, and then like, you know, it can't undo that. Where in FileMaker Pro and Go, the layers are still there. You can't see them, but they're still there. That's pretty, that's an important one to cover. WebDirect does not cover support table view. I can't find anyone who's ever complained to me about this, right? Table view is this, 
Excel spreadsheet thing that was created by Claris Marketing, I don't know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago. I use it only from triaging and doing damage maintenance on a database as a developer, but I never ever give a customer access to a table view, ever. So uh, kind of important, WebDirect offers limited styles of text. We talked about this the other day, we were talking about FileMaker Go, certain styling is available on FileMaker Pro that's not in Go. WebDirect's even more restrictive on that. We do have questions. Okay, what's the question? Give me a question. The first question is from Ken, what about on layout enter? Does that trigger? Yeah, that's a trigger. Mark. Yeah, on layout enter will trigger. All that stuff triggers. Just keep in mind that whatever you're doing is running on the server. And so where you're, as a developer, your experience was that some of the, the, the development or programming and scripting would run locally, right? Because scripts generally run locally on your client. On this, they're always going to run on the server. And someone goes, that's really good. Except that the server can only do so much for everyone. The reason that Claris has been slow to adopt the PSOS stuff and all the server heavy side of things is that it's really easy for a lot of users. It's re oh, okay, back up. It's really easy for developers who are inexperienced to write inefficient code. And then of course, everyone dumps that inefficient code on the server. And then everyone wants to know why the FileMaker server is so slow. Well, because maybe it's all the server does is run inefficient scripts all day. And so the, the thing is with Claris is that they, like for example, sorting, and summary processing and stuff like that used to only be run on the client. So the server never had to do that before. Now, starting, I don't know, about a year ago, year and a half ago, sorting and, and processing summary fields and things would be done at the server level if the server is less than 25% busy. That's a new thing. Me doing this for 34 years, that's a new thing. It's new. So the first 30 years of me doing this, we didn't have that right? The client always did everything. Why did the client do everything? Because A, it could, and B, Claris Engineering, they were scared to death of the developers all dumping on the server to overload it. So they were kind of gun shy one way, you know, they're afraid of it. Don't give it to me. That's bad. Um, and then, then of course, now we're starting to endorse it more, which gives us more flexibility. The, the happy point in life is the medium between two extremes, right? It's not like people say, I love chocolate. Okay, well, then then go to Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory and go face down in the river of chocolate. No, I don't like chocolate that much. All right, well, happiness in life is between somewhere between no chocolate and total chocolate, right? That kind of idea. And so that's what they're trying to do with Claire. So performance optimization. Remember, in terms of performance, FileMaker Pro is the most performant. Go is somewhat less performant. And WebDirect is the least performant client of them all. So all the optimizations, you really need to encourage yourself to use those as best you can. WebDirect is uh, performance is affected by the processing capabilities of the user's device, right? In terms of screen redraws and communicating to the to the server. Number of WebDirect concurrently accessing the app, right? How many how many server biz processes can the server run at once? The quality of the user's net network connection. That's always that that's like. I don't know why they mentioned this because that's universal for everything. The amount of data transfer from the client, from the FileMaker server to your, your client. So putting big images in it. I mean, a lot of, I think this was written for people who never thought about optimization at all. Some of this is like, should not be new, okay? Uh, the frequency in which the browser communicates with the server, right? So it uh, a record is created, open, commit, or deleted. So the, the client will, Every time it does that, it's firing stuff off the server. The whole idea of on transaction, how that can be a performance help with Pro and Go, doesn't buy you anything here in terms of performance benefit. Because every time you're doing something, you're still going back to the server. It might buy you a little bit, but there was a DEF CON Claris Engage session on transactions from the standpoint of rolling everything up, and that way it minimizes the amount of beating on the FileMaker server. Well, that those generally, those those on transaction scripts would be running locally, so your so your local script wouldn't be that busy hammering back and forth to the server, but but if you're already going to the server, how much are you really saving? You're saving some. It's probably measurable, but it's not that much. Uh, current record has changed. The layout has changed. The calculation evaluated. All these things cause it to bang off the server of your web direct client. A lot of these, well, a record is created won't initially cause a server 
to, well, except that serial number it has to be uh, com uh, conversed about the serial number if you have one created. But open, committed, a lot of these things are deferred by pro and go until they're really needed. Okay. Minimize the following items. So what, the other thing they say is that even though it rendered everything between these two areas, I'm going to hit cancel right here. It rendered everything between these two areas, okay, that the fewer objects over here, the less it's going to be hammering your network, pushing the data through the network. It's a very, very, very important topic. Margaret, questions? Yes, we do have questions. Um, one from David Angel, a little bit earlier, but I'm going to grab it because I think it's a good question. Pro Go is client server, web direct is server side only? Question mark. Yeah, so Pro and Go are apps that you install on your client computer. So WebDirect is a client that runs in your local browser. So I am right here. I'm in FileMaker Pro. Okay. And this looks just like it, but over here I am in Safari or Edge or Chrome. Okay. And so this is a browser. It's running through your browser, but the server is doing all the heavy lifting for you. It figures out what this looks like and it builds a CSS HTML page and shoves it down through the internet to you. Right, so if I click here and flip a record, it had to figure out everything it was gonna draw here. Now, Claris is getting better at doing this more efficiently, but at the end of the day, if I was in Pro, like if I'm like if I'm on Pro or Go, and I and remember Pro and Go look, download the first, say, 25 to 50 records, right? Um, if I'm on Pro or Go, like right here, like let's just do this example. I'm on this record, we're on this record over here. If I click down on Pro, like that, there was no server communication at all because I'm viewing one record, I viewed another record. If I click down, no server communication, right? If I'm over here, I click down, it goes, what do I do? Call the server. Hey, I got to move down a record. How do I draw this? Ah! Right? So it, so it's even by me not editing anything or doing anything, it's talking to the server, right? And so it did it pretty quick. But when you get a lot of people going, it suddenly won't be so, you know, it's, it's all fun and games until, you know, someone slips with the kitchen knife in their hands and it's not so much fun anymore. we got a bunch of people logged on here. This is awesome. I love seeing all this. Peter Keen says, more memory, faster process on the server. Yeah, definitely. Um, up until 75 or 100 users. It depends how, how I want to say, how mm, fat your application is. This right here isn't too bad it's designed to be efficient but if you start adding a bunch of extra buttons and fields in here and it gets heavier and heavier and heavier then it gets to a point with with filemaker your filemaker server install that you start having extra worker machines so your server install is actually uh a file the main filemaker server what they call the primary and then there are additional worker machines okay our primary machine and their worker machines, you can have up to five of them, I think. And each of those five can handle, in quotes, loosely, 100 uh, clients. So you can support 500 WebDirect clients, right? But once again, you're going to big, you're going to buy a bigger Amazon server. I mean, this Amazon servers go from $50 a month to three or four or $500 a day if you get some of the biggest ones they have. We're talking big hardware, big iron here. Okay. I have a question about the session identifiers. Yes. Why is it not the account name? Like if I logged in as Margaret Carlton in my special Margaret Carlton account, it wouldn't it would show up it looks like as a web direct identifier if I was logging yes. in by web direct. It's just the way that works. However, Claris had a fix on this. Has anyone played with this fix? I know it was out there. I actually never played with it. Is that it right there? Set session identifier? Oh, it is. Okay, Jacob Taylor just said 10 workers. They've upgraded to 10 workers. Jacob Taylor, you're not allowed to be here. You're supposed to be working. Yeah, they keep increasing the number of workers. Obviously, Claris is doing this because someone or some customers are really using it, and and Claris figured they could do it. Uh, so the primary machine ha owns and holds the database, and all the worker machines are the ones that are, are creating this kind of virtual environment for the browser. Right, so the the database only lives on the main primary machine, right? Because if you're back over here with the administrative console, wherever that wandered off to, you can see that that these are all the people logged in. But if we go over here to the administration, we're on the FileMaker server. We got that. We got this. So it was under connectors. It's weird. So here's WebDirect is enabled. The, okay. 
Total number of connections, 10 right now. The, and this is the primary machine. So when you do it, install a FileMaker server on Mac and Windows, and Jacob would have to ask about this on Linux, you can, it pop up will, will come up during the install saying, is this going to be a primary machine or is this going to be a worker machine? And so that way the installer can fork. I don't know the workers are support on Linux yet. Jacob, are they supporting Linux yet? I use a worker for protection outside of my network in the DMZ and only a worker can go through the firewall. That's pretty good. Yeah. So Jacob's talking about edge cases with workers. So the 10, the 10 workers is apparently is a Linux only feature. And it says it supports 1,000 users simultaneously. Mike Wallace, we'll give hats off to Mike Wallace. He, This is the session identifier. So let's talk about the back to the market session identifier question. So, so that's an identifier to the for the user's current session. It's description. By default, the session idea is some uh, magical random value that doesn't mean anything to Margaret. And you can return it by saying get username. You can use this uh, script to have to change the set so it provides additional information for the administrators, right? Uh, for each file your client connected to your host, there's only one value in session. This value remains in effect until the identifier is performed again in the custom app, blah, blah, blah. The session idea is available to administration follow ways. So let's read the best practice on this. Each user signs in with a unique account. You can identify them by the account name. In that case, there will be no reason to use in scripts, but I'm talking about in the FileMaker server because we don't see, we don't really see the account name on here, right? They're talking about if, if you're in pro or, or you're in the actual app running a script in the app, but I'm talking about on the interface here, this is kind of like janky. All right, so let's try this. So let's say that if, I'm going to go to script workspace with this real quick. I'm just going to run a, have a script set up manually here. I'm going to create it at the top probably be at the bottom. Let's call it Wallace set session ID. That's his idea of a script. I guess he could actually put this in here. Don't mean to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, so what was it? It was set set session identifier. And then we could set it to the get account name, I think. Yeah, but they all be uh hmm, see, that's the problem. Oh, they would all be admin because for everyone using the admin account. Yeah, so let me do it this way. Show, oh, this is going to, now it went from Mike to being super janky here. That's what I'm doing. It's my fault. What is your name? Because we don't have individual names in here, right? <laughs> okay, what is your name? What is your name? Input field is going to be show input field one. It's going to be a variable called dollar, dollar web. Let's say name over here, right? At web name, copy that, put that over there, hit OK. Then it comes over here. Then we could have this set to the web name like that, right? And then I didn't even know you could do that with custom dialogues. I know we're not supposed to use custom dialogues, but that's still. why we don't. You're, well, you're starting to see what Claris does like, hey, you can use a calculation that they're starting to put the little option below in a lot of places where you can use a variable instead. It's it's kind of people, they said, hey, there's these variables. Then everyone in the community went, well, it would be great if we could use them everywhere, right? So mm -hmm. I'm going to put a commit on here just on general principle because I don't know what's going to happen. So we're going to run this over here. So I don't know which identifier I am right now, but what I'm going to say, I'm going to say I'm going to run this script. Oh, no, I'm in pro. Let's see. I want to be in web direct. Is this web direct here? Oh, here it is. I see another one. Here it is. So let me go. Doo, doo, doo. Oh, how do I run a script over here? Yeah, you have to hit this and you have to go down to scripts and then you have to say Wallace ID. Okay, what is your name? Scooby Doo. Okay. Now, the question, if I come over here, does Scooby-Doo show up now? <gasps> there I am. There's Scooby-Doo right there. So there you go, Margaret. Yeah, we see other people. Kermit the Frog. Yep, there we go. So this is the best kind of live stream, right? So we talk about this. Uh, Ruben, uh, I do a part of your ID, so it's, so it's a random. Yeah, I was thinking about that, right? Because just Scooby-Doo by itself is like, because you could have two Scooby-Doo's, but if you could thread in a... Uh, Scooby Doo, the Marine Corps, that's Larry or our other Marine, um, Mark Johnson. Um, but yeah, so uh, the idea is that you could put in a, 
part of the UUID in there and keep it unique, which would be useful, right? Or change it to the user's machine name or account name or whatever he had, individual account name. So um, pretty neat. So overall, WebDirect works pretty great. Jacob Taylor, did you have anything, other comments here? Margaret, you have questions here? The, I have a question. So in order to get WebDirect to work, you need to turn on both the switches and server, and then you have to turn on the access privileges and security? Oh, yeah. We haven't talked about that too much. So it was already turned on, but let's just cover this. So, no, so let's, let's, let me state this up front. This is Pro. This is WebDirect. They look very, very similar. In Pro, I can go File, Manage, and do stuff. Over here, there's no and not going to be. Oops, that's the wrong one. Over here. There's no, A, there's no FileMaker menu at the top, it's a browser. If I click on this, these are our options. File, notice there's no manage, okay? There's no database development, no scripting, no debugging um, in here at all. So it's like Go. So, so Go and WebDirect are consumption clients only, right? And Pro is both des design development and consumption both so over here i can't i can't there's no security edit over here now there are certain security script steps that you can like add accounts and do things like that you cannot add a privilege set and you cannot add an extended privilege with a script so it's one of those sort of things i come back over here to pro i go file manage security and i got admin right here and i go to advanced settings down here at the bottom and so I see the uh, full access, which is admin, and I can uh, I can say edit that if I want. It will show me the extended privileges down here that are enabled for it. ODBC is on, FileMaker Network is on, so FM app turns on Pro and Go access, so you can log in with those. If that wasn't on, you could not log in with Pro or Go. And then there should be one here for WebDirect. There it is. So that's turned on right there. If that's not turned on then someone cannot authenticate in. Before anyone asks, I don't know. I, I think if I turn it off right now and I save it, it's not gonna boot everyone. You just won't be able to come back in, is how that works, okay? Um, but you could have it turned off here and on right here. I've done this to myself by accident before where I could only get into the file that was on the server with WebDirect. And so the only way to fix it is to close it off the server then open the file directly with Pro to fix it, right? So you can kind of get yourself, it's like painting yourself into a corner. You're painting the floor, painting the walls. You paint, 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 paint. You should be backing your butt up towards the door when you're painting and backing up 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 and backing up. And backing up. This is called painting yourself in the corner, then you're screwed. You have to walk across the paint, get it all over your shoes, all over your hands. It's going to be a nightmare. So um, just keep that in mind. So the so extended privileges are about sharing data out with even yourself, but sharing data. Okay, tomorrow we're talking about record level security, layout level security. That'll be playing up here with these two top toggles up here. I have a question. Okay, question. What happens if your Wi-Fi abandons you? Like in the middle of the typing in a record, will the server just like wait for you to reconnect? Does it automatically commit and then you have to re-log in? No, you're gonna like... have to re-log. Uh, it's not gonna auto anything. I mean, I'm pretty. I don't want to do it here, but it's you should. Oh, it doesn't even like commit it for you, Jacob. <laughs> okay. No, no, because you're because because okay. So let's think about this logically real quick. If I click into Freddy, I'm gonna click Freddy. Click one, two, three. Click. Okay, I'm in there now. If I type a character, it's actually gonna record lock it. So now, as I type here, since I don't have a script trigger activated on here, as I type right now, this is one of those moments where the FileMaker server is not being notified that I'm typing. And, and the super nuclear missile secrets are this and, this and this and this and this and this and this and convicted guilty and 20 years to life in prison. Okay, so I crash right now. Okay, force quit Safari. Are you sure you want to force quit Safari? Okay. So if I come over here and try to edit this, now look what it says. It says uh, this record is locked. So so let's talk about how this works. So the way it works in the world of FileMaker, so if I log back in right now, that data is not going to be there. You're not going to get that data back. One. Two, FileMaker is 120 minute, 120 minute, 120 second, second lock where if you disappear, 
FileMaker assumes that you might, it might the internet might have dropped off. So if I if I just pulled the plug, which would have screwed up the live stream for 30 seconds and plugged it back in, you're inside that 120 second window, it would have reconnected. You wouldn't even notice anything happening. This happens all the time with people. Internets go up and down, you change networks, whatever. If you're inside the 120 seconds, FileMaker won't auto reconnect, doesn't have to auto reconnect. Pro and Go will try to preserve the data for you. The browser is not that smart, okay? So the local clients will go, yeah, the user typed this in and we really like the user and they're not too big of a jerk. We wanna save the data if possible. Can we reconnect? It's been longer than 120 seconds. So I've been talking here, if I type again, see it's still locked, right? But after, oops, go back to contacts. After 120 seconds, the server is gonna go, man, that user, I think they died. So what we're gonna do is just gracefully unwind that user out of the system and if they had locked a record, we'll release the lock. So if I click on here, nope, still hasn't released it yet. At some point, it will release it, okay? But that should be 120 seconds on that because the client died unless someone else has locked it up. Hopefully, that's not the case, but you never know. And it's funny because I thought I changed the name. I wonder if someone else. Anyway, so yeah, that's kind of how that works. So you have the 15-minute forced log off if you're idle. Because what the FileMaker server doesn't want to do is it doesn't like, for example, a regular FileMaker server, you have a bunch of pro and go users connected to it and they're idle. There's really no load on the FileMaker server. Really very little. It pings every 120 seconds. It pings to make sure you're still alive. Ping. Are you alive? You sure? Yep. I'm good. Very lightweight. But for it to ping and manage that with a browser is a lot heavier. It's a lot heavier. It's called, I think that they call long polling. It's a technical thing, but it has to do with this long interactive kind of chat that's going on. Whereas FileMaker, you could have it never log off, but WebDirect, the longest you can go without it not logging someone off their idle is 60 minutes. Uh -huh. hey, the, the 120 seconds specific to Pro, David, absolutely it is specific to Pro. Pro and Go. FileMaker server has a fundamental client uh, disconnect time. of uh, Now, see, if you're past 120 seconds, the server disconnects you. Right, because see, if you crash, you don't send the server a note saying, hey, I'm leaving, voluntarily leaving, goodbye, you're just gone. After 120 se se seconds, you're disconnect the server disconnects you. If you come back into Pro or Go, Pro or Go will try to auto reconnect for you. Boop, boop, boop. Tries to reconnect, okay? And if you were typing in a record, it tries to, and you were doing data entry, it's gonna try to reestablish that lock on that record and put your cursor back in there. Pro and Go are awesome for that. But you've, but you've gone past 120 seconds, Pro and Go will still try to resuscitate your life. With WebDirect, it's, that's a bridge too far, okay? Uh, we have another question from Ken, which I actually quite like. Uh, back to scripts on WebDirect, any hints for troubleshooting? The script works on Pro, but it won't work on WebDirect. I think it's one that he's working on. I think he's just saying in general, like how do you troubleshoot scripts that work on Pro but refuse to work on WebDirect? Well, I mean, I mean, at the most basic level, okay, as you're writing, <laughs> as you're in the script workspace, you're working on stuff, and I've got this giant area and starting point. And if you slide down here a little bit, you can see the side over here, or let me click on a startup script, like startup script, here's startup script. And you can show the right side over here. So then what you can do is you can pop up and say, show me only the items that work on Mac, Windows, or server, right? Or only work on WebDirect. So then you can go through here and you can see things that are grayed out that don't work on WebDirect. One of the things that don't work on WebDirect is insert and is it yeah, insert from device. And that's a huge one. This one right here is an auto automatic piss off the Android people uh, thing right here. So that's grayed out which means it doesn't work. Listen, every client has certain script steps that won't run. Insert from device doesn't work on Pro. It works on Go only, right? And so insert from device, the one where you say, go give me a signature, go take a picture, go make a video, make an audio recording, do something awesome. It's awesome sauce. I love insert from device. It's, it's totally great. However, it only works on Go. Well, I got Android on WebDirect. Remember, WebDirect doesn't really know what client, what kind of computer it's on. I mean, clients could try to work on this, but then there'd always be some sort of, you know, weird outline Chinese made Android phone that no one ever heard of. And you're like, hey, that's a great phone. It's only $49 and a lifetime supply of, you know, data on your network, right? The problem is, is that 
its APIs for calling the camera and doing stuff, assuming it's using Android. But what if, you know, everyone tweaks, takes Android and tweaks with it and messes with it. So the question is, can you write an API that reliably go get the picture and manage stuff like that? Clarice has looked at that, I'm pretty sure. Um, it would be great if, if the insert for device could be really be used to work with Android, with WebDirect, but no. Um, in fact, that gets into another edge case where we have app uh, Windows computers that have touch screens. So it's a full computer with a touch screen, but FileMaker doesn't know about that. Only the only thing that really does touch screen legitimately well is Go. But what if I, while I'm running, I'm running Pro on Windows? Well, you can do the the touch of the screen turns into a click, but you really can't pop the on-screen keyboard in Pro. Well, I want to see, like, I click into a film, I want to see an on-screen keyboard. Then you got to roll your own, build your own buttons and stuff on the layout. So there's a lot of little things that Claris doesn't know as to what hardware you've you've cooked up. That makes sense? Yes. I have a question looking at this list and then looking at Ken's follow-up question. Can you not do finds on WebDirect? Sure you could do finds. You do finds all Okay, because it, it says perform find slash replace is not a script that works on WebDirect. Uh, find or replace is a text editing. Don't don't get confused with that. There is a find command that finds <laughs> finds records. Okay. Then there is the find replace command, which is a text editing function where find all the words that say Claris and change them to FileMaker Inc or something. Right. It's a text search swap replace thing. Okay. So if I go to records, we got navigation. Should be find in here. Uh, save records. So save as Excel is not supporting web direct, but it, save as PDF is. Oh, printing, 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 printing. Okay. And this was a feature that they added in FileMaker 16 with web uh, or 17 is that when you print, you're in a browser, right? So say you're in a browser, you want to print. When you print web pages in a browser, it sucks, right? <laughs> so the only way to make printing not suck in web direct is to, for the for the, the system to create a PDF for you of what it would look like in Pro and then give it to you as a PDF. So when you tell WebDirect to print, you're telling FileMaker server to create a PDF, to pretend like it's Pro, create a PDF for you, and then shove the PDF through your browser to you so you can have it. So even when you tell it to print, you get a PDF. Someone the other day called and, and said, hey, this is really stupid, it doesn't print. And I'm like, well, yes and no. Right, it's a that's a limitation of the browser technology. It's always been that way. So here we are. We're back in here, and then uh, so if we go to records, there is a new record delete. There should be also or the find oh, find is right here. It's hiding up here. Enter find mode. Right. So you come back over here to script script workspace. So where is perform? Find. Yeah, see right here. Perform find is supported. Perform quick find eh, is supported. Perform find and replace, which is a text function. It should be a perform find replace text or something. Or perform text find and replace. All right. Anything else we got? Anyone else have questions? Want to thank everyone for being here. Appreciate if you have questions about uh, or topic suggestions for the live stream. Feel free to send an email to support at rcconsulting.com. All right, everyone. I appreciate it. See you tomorrow. Filemaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the Filemaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir. Oh,